everyone and welcome back to today's colour pencil demonstration where I'm going to be talking you through step by step how to draw cat eyes using the Prismacolor Premier colour pencils. So the first thing that I'm doing today is I'm just going to lighten up the sketch that I've drawn out by using a bit of blue tack but to do this you can also use a kneaded eraser and I'm just doing this to lighten up the sketch so that it removes some of the graphite so it's easier to use the coloured pencils and so that our colours don't get really muddied up. And now the first thing that I'm doing in this drawing is I'm going in with the black Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencil but you can use any black colour pencil that you want and I'm just using this to outline the darkest areas of the eyes. So for example with cat eyes I'm using it to outline the pupil and also the area around the eyes where it is really really dark and to do this I'm using very little pressure and I'm also using circular motions because today we're going to be using solvent so we don't need to burnish today so I'm using the zest it pencil blend solvent today which is going to make it really easy to add additional layers and do really detailed fur as well so I'm just going throughout both of the eyes and I'm adding the shadows and I'm also adding the shadows to the iris as well so where I look at the reference photo I'm seeing where there's darker shadows within the iris and I'm just adding them in and this helps us to identify where the the shadowed areas of the eyes are at the very start of the drawing and then we can build on this with lots of colors so like I said I'm using circular motions and a really light hand you really don't have to press very hard when you're blending with solvent because the whole point of using the solvent is that we want to keep the tooth of the paper intact so if we press too hard then we're going to be flattening that out and that's not what we want because we want to be able to do loads and loads of layers so once I've done that I'm then going on and working on the iris and I'm using lots of different colours for this but the eyes were really like a bluey greenish colour. So you can use any variations of the colours but I would suggest having an indigo blue and then a few different values of the greens and blues to get some different tones in there because you really don't want it to all just be one colour. So use a lot of variations with the colours but you don't have to use the exact colours that I'm using to get a realistic look. It's just about the contrast so have some lighter colours and some darker colours to add in the contrast between the shadows and the highlights and again I'm using very light hand it doesn't matter about this white graininess that we can see because that is going to get all taken care of by using the solvent and I did do a video recently like a few days ago where I talk about burnishing and solvent and the pros and cons of using each one so if you want to know more about this method and the benefits of using it then feel free to check out that video as well once you've watched this so I'm also working on the fur around the eyes as well, so I'm just blocking in the general shading. I'm not worrying about doing lots of individual hairs at the moment, that will come when I've blended it out and then I can go over and add in lots of hairs and stuff like that. But for now I'm just blocking out the general shapes and looking at the reference photo and every cat will be different and have different colours in their fur, so really look at the colours in your reference photo and try to pick out them. So to use the solvent it is really important that you have enough pigment on the paper in order to blend it otherwise you will get a gritty look but to avoid having it really grainy you can just build up lots of really light layers and it should be fine. So in the fur I used some browns and also some greys as well and I used a bit of black on the shadows just to deepen it up a bit. So I do like using black in my coloured pencil artwork but I do like layering other colours over it as well so it's not just flat black. So for example in the fur I used it in certain areas but I layered brown over the top of it as well so it wasn't so flat. Now I'm just going through the fur and really adding some details. It's also really really important that when you're doing your pencil strokes for the fur that you really look at the direction that the fur is going in. So this is really important to add motion to the fur because all the fur will be going in a certain direction and it's really important that you get that direction correct in order to make your drawing look realistic. So just look at your reference photo and mark on the general direction that the fur is going in and then replicate that in your drawing. So as you can see I'm just building up the coverage and if you want to add more pigment but you don't want to get in darker then make sure you add a lot of light colours as well because you do need the pigment down but it doesn't mean you have to add lots of dark colours. You can add lots of light greys or light creamy colours and stuff like that on your fur and some white as well if you don't want it to get too dark but you definitely need to have enough pigment down in order to blend it out in the first place if you want to get a really soft finish. So now I'm just going to go and do exactly the same that I just did there with the other eye. But with this next eye it's going to be a bit darker because in the reference photo this eye was in a lot more shadow. So I'm just going to do this eye with a lot more of the dark blues and blacks. So yeah I'm just going to go and work through the whole of the eye and the fur around it and then I will blend it all out.
Okay, so now that I've finished adding all of the colored pencil, I'm going to go in with the zest -It pencil blend and I'm using a really small paintbrush to get in and do all the little details of the iris. And so it's really important that when you use the zest -It pencil blend that you don't use too much on your paintbrush, otherwise it's really hard to control what you're doing. So I like to use a really small paintbrush because it's easier to control and I don't like to use too much of the solvent on my paintbrush so I do blot a lot of the excess off because I would rather go in and have to keep getting more and more solvent than putting too much on my paper and it all and all the colours getting all muddy and messed up into each other. So I'm just going to go and use the solvent on both of the eyes and as you can see when I'm adding that solvent it just gets rid of the white graininess and it gives it a really painterly look and I really like this look because it just makes it a lot more realistic and it makes it so easy to go over and add additional layers like I'll show you in a minute. Also, if you'd like to learn more about how I did this in a closer look, I'm thinking of doing this as a really slowed down version on the Patreon account that I'm going to be opening. So I'm planning on opening a Patreon account where I'm going to do a lot slower tutorials and videos and stuff like that and critiques. So if you guys would be interested in that, then make sure to comment down and let me know your thoughts on it. Anyway, so once I've added the solvent, I'm now going to wait for it to dry and it won't take too long, about 5 or 10 minutes just to be on the safe side would be really good. And then once I've done that, then it's, it's basically like you've got a whole new layer and you can start afresh. So now that I've added that solvent, I'm going back in with the white colour pencils and I'm using the white Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencil. And I really like this white colour pencil because it's really opaque and it stands up really well against the other colours, as you can see. So I'm going to start by doing the really in-detail strands of fur around the eyes. And you can see when I start to do the fur that overlaps over that black, just how much it stands out. And it's really good if you really sharpen it to a really sharp point because you can get so much detail in there and it's really good for stuff like that. So at this point, this is where I'm looking at the individual fur, and it doesn't matter exactly that you get every bit of fur in the exact same place as the reference photo. What's really important is that you look at the direction that the fur is going in in the reference photo and replicate that, because it doesn't matter if you get every strand in the right place. No one's going to notice unless they're really comparing the two images, which is not really your main goal. You want it to look realistic, but you don't want to spend hours just making sure every strand of hair is in the exact right place. So when you add the solvent, it does make the colours a lot more vibrant. But as you can see, you can just go back over it, add the white colour, and it really tones them back down. And you can add many, many layers if you use the solvent technique. There's no real limitation to it. So you can add lots more layers. You don't just have to use the white colour pencil. You can go back over with all different types of the colour pencils that you want to. And just keep building up maybe five, six, or even ten layers to get exactly like how you want it. So this technique is really good if you want to do things like blurry backgrounds because you can add white pencil and you can really smooth it out and get it looking really blurry. So when I did the really harsh highlights in the eyes, I didn't just leave them white. So even though they're highlights, they can still have a lot of different colours in them as well. So for example, this highlight had a lot of blue in it. So I made sure to replicate that in the drawing that I did. And I also did some of the fur marks later just to show some detail of the reflection of the fur in the eye. And so next I'm going to go in with the Faber-Castell brown pencil and also a Faber-Castell black pencil. And I really like these because you can sharpen them to get a really fine point and you can get a much finer point than you can with the wax based pencils. And I'm just doing that to add in some little details because the cat, even though he had a lot of white fur, he also had some little black strands here and there as well. So I'm just going to add these and this again will add a lot of detail and depth to the drawing. And again, when I'm doing this, I don't have to apply any more pressure than I did before because normally when you're burnishing, if you want a colour to stand out over the top of it, you'd really have to apply a lot of pressure to make it stand out. But with this technique, you really don't. You can just apply the same amount of pressure as before, really, really light pressure, and the colour will just come off really, really well and really stand out because you've used solvent and you've really blended that pigment into the paper and you've really broke up all the wax pigment and blended it together and it's just soaked into that paper. It's really nice nice because you've just restored the tooth and it can really grab onto that colour pencil again. You don't really have to just force it into the paper.
so now I'm working on the other eye and again I said this right eye was a lot more in shadow than the left eye so I've left it darker so the highlights aren't as harsh as they were on the left eye and again I'm just drawing the fur around the eyes and I'm making sure it's going in that direction and that I've got some of the longer hairs overlapping onto the eye as well. But yeah, there's so many different techniques that you can use to draw fur. This isn't just the only one that you can use. So you can use solvent, you can also use the burnishing method, or you can even use things like using a marker as a base, or watercolors as a base, or even using like action tools. And I've got a video explaining lots of different ways to draw realistic fur if you want to check that out as well. But I do think this technique to get fur is really good because you can just do it so effortlessly. You don't have to put blood, sweat and tears in to get the strands of fur to show up against like dark colours. So I really love this technique for things like that. And I also think it's probably one of the most efficient and quickest methods to use as well. Anyway guys, that's it for today's video and tutorial. I hope you found that useful and please let me know what you think of this method and whether you like using solvent and your opinions on it. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see even more colour pencil tips and tutorials and all of that stuff, feel free to subscribe because I'd love to have you here. As always, I'll leave links to my social media sites like my Instagram and all that in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!